Going on YouTube, Cloverbills here, back with another Scarlet Violet video, and today we're building around his Suian Sneezer. Very, very popular Pokemon right now, very hotly requested. Uh, I think like six people did like a tier sub for this, and they said, Clover, please take my money and please build something around his Suian Sneezer. It, it's my favorite Pokemon. I really want to use in Regulation H. And I said, cool, no worries. Just wait a little bit. The time is not right. But that time is now. The time has come to look at his Suing Sneezer because it is one of the hottest used Pokemon right now. Strong usage, great results, you know, uh, especially over this past weekend, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but let's look at his Suing Sneezer as a whole here. So, you know, just looking at the, the stats here, triple digits in the attack and speed. So, you know, this thing is like a, a fast sweeper. That's first of all. The bulk is not that great which is why often enough you'll see a Focus Sash as its most popular item, along with the Poison Touch ability, uh, granting more chances to poison. Typical set here, something like Dire Claw, of course, with its main signature move. Again, a chance to sleep, poison, or paralyze. Very, very useful, depending on the scenario. Then you have the Stab Close Combat. Very good against stuff like King Gambit, which is strong right now. Also, you know, the, the Arkeladon doesn't want to be taking Close Combats. Uh, create against Tyranitar, forcing out Terras. So lots of things are weak to fighting types, uh, even Incineroar, right? So, you know, all that considered, is, is Sneezer looks pretty good. And then again, Dire Claw into stuff like uh, Primarina, which is uh, maybe the most used water type right now. Again, that fairy typing isn't helping it all that much. So now you're susceptible to that. So all of a sudden, uh, Hisuian Sneezer is in a pretty decent spot right now. And then you get access to Fake Out, right? So a fast Fake Out Pokemon, which is really, really nice. And then, of course, you could just round this out with something like Protect. You also don't even necessarily have to go for the Fake Out. You can use a third coverage move here. I've seen a few stuff. I've seen stuff like Throat Chop here, uh, where, again, you can just use this as a utility Pokemon to remove... Uh, key items here. Uh, not to get, that's right, that's knockoff. But again, uh, with Terra Dark, also really, really strong. Again, because you know, you're weak to the psychic stuff, the, the fighting poison typing. So go Terra Dark, you don't get Psy Spam to death. Then you, all of a sudden you hit him hard with a throw chop. That's also definitely within reach. Uh, otherwise, you can just go like Terra Stellar for a little bit more damage. And then you can even do stuff like acrobatics, which I've seen, but then that requires you to use uh, a held item here. So usually you'll see something like Grassy Seed. With something like Gorilla Boom, okay, or then you'll even see something like the Psychic Seed with something of the Psychic Terrain usage. Usually it's going to be the Ndidi, whether it be the male or the female. Either way, we have both kinds of teams, uh, which we'll show you. All right, we're going to build you four teams, all right, because again, uh, lots of people cashed in, so uh, we're, we're going to give a, a separate squad for all of these people. So, um, and then at the same time, like I said, Focus Sash, uh, you know, on the History of Sneezer. Either way, I think Dragapult is a very good partner uh, with the history and Sneezer, okay? Because again, you just consider their synergy and it actually just makes a lot of sense. Uh, again, with the Sneezer, uh, you know, just having that strong fighting coverage against the Dark types, which is, you know, Dark types are really good against Dragapult. Same thing against the Fairy Weakness, again, with Dragapult being weak to fairies and the Moonblast stuff, his suing Sneezer, uh, again, with the poison coverage uh, can really help you in that sense. Uh, and, you know, just both of them have great utility with each other. They're both fast, which is great. So you have two of the fastest Pokemon in the format on your team. Uh, and then all you have to do is just kind of support it with the rest of the squad, uh, just in terms of what you need for your team and what's prevalent running around in the meta. And if you don't know, you can always refer to your VGC resources. For example, Lab Mouse, all right? You know, again, we love using this thing. I, I've used this website every single day. Uh, which is why I'm able to pump out so many teams for you guys because, again, we make our decisions based on the data uh, from the meta as of right now. So, again, shout out to the guys at Lab Mouse uh, for doing the hard work for us so this way videos like this are possible. But this is a, this is what you can get out of it, right? So you can see usage stat. Look at this rise of his suing sneezer over the past you know couple weeks or so. Tournament standing is very strong. Again, look at that. Uh, now, the teammates, this is where you can always look and see what are people playing with his Sweden Sneezer. So it looks like a Fire Water Grass card. Look, we've got Pre Marina uh, with the top usage there. Then Rillaboom coming in second, followed by Volcarona uh, in a third slot over there, which makes a lot of sense, you know, just given where we are in the meta. So you can just easily slap on those things. So Rillaboom, Pre Marina, and Volcarona come here. So again, looking at this, you have Fake Out Pressure from the Rillaboom here. You also have Fake Out Pressure from the Sneezer if you decide to go for it, uh, which we will. And this is this in turn is really good for Volcarona because now you can set up the Quiver Dance, 
right? And then let Volcarona outspeed everything and let Volcarona be your win condition and let these guys come in and, you know, uh, do, you know, in certain matchups and just help out the Volcarona uh, at the end of the day. And then after that, uh, it, it, it's mat matchup specific. You can do a couple things here. You could do stuff like Clefable, Double Fairy idea, where again, the Clefable with Unaware is going to help you against Mouse Ape stuff, against Dondozo a little bit. You could do King Gambit here. King Gambit uh, is also pretty good. Synergy with Sneezer uh, to an extent, again, because with the Sneezer being weak to Psychic stuff, you can swap in the King Gambit. Dark type there also helps a lot. Uh, you know for that matchup and then you get a dragon fairy steel fire water grass core in this sense, right? So you can definitely do something like this You can also get a redirector on this team. So something like electabuzz over here So you get follow me, right? You get electro web speed control Which is really nice against maybe the tailwind mirrors and then you get the double fake out pressure So now you can really set up the volcarona in this sense. sometimes you can even go for both uh, with king gambit and electabuzz uh, for that matter or you can even forego the dragon bolts entirely and you can even just do king gambit there so lots of mixing and matching with a lot of these pieces uh depending on how you want to approach it uh and we've got you covered we, we're gonna go with three different variations um with this sneezer rillaboom idea and then the fourth one will be a side spam idea where you're using the psychic seeds uh, with the sneezer. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's actually look at some tournament results and let's see what people have been using uh, and let's see how it matches up with the data that we saw from the Lab Mouse website. Okay, so even before we go into the Lab Mouse website, I want to point our attention to the tournament from this past weekend, the Victory Road September Challenge. This is, a, a, you know, again, 340 plus players. We recapped this tournament in a previous video uh, and Sneezer had some great results here. So you can even use this as a template and a starting point as far as like building your own Hisuian Sneezer team. But let's take a look at some of these top teams here. So at fourth place here, eight and two, Stefano Greppi. Okay, look at this. So no Dragapult here, but uh, it's Grassy Seed Sneezer with Rillaboom. That makes sense. There is the Premarine and Volcarona, as we said from the data from Lab Mouse makes sense. Then you have Clefable here with the Follow Me, uh, the Unaware Pokemon here, and then you have the King Gambit Black classes here. So uh, really, really strong five-man core with Sneezer. It makes a lot of sense. Again, uh, you have double fake out pressure here. You have the haze from uh, Primarina removing buffs, especially from Dondozo. The King Gambit's going to help you in uh, the size band matchup a little bit. And then Volcarona gives you that strong win condition, uh, you know, if you need it. Now, again, granted, you're not going to be able to bring Volcarona or Sneezer every single game, right? You have to choose and, you know, just choose which Pokemon is going to give you the best chance of winning depending on the matchup, right? So uh, that's a really good team there. Um, uh, from Stefano. So let's look down more. Uh, the, this one also has uh, an interesting idea here. So this is again non Dragapult here, which is still okay. Uh, again, Sneezer uh, with Primarina, Rillaboom, and Serral Edge as opposed to Volcarona. So Flash Fire coming in clutch here. Probably nice against the Hisuian Typhlosion switch in, right? So that's also pretty cool. Uh, this is also a bulk up set. So here, this becomes your win condition, right? So instead of the Volcarona, this is the Pokemon that's setting up here. Uh, and look at this coaching sneezer with Sarah's that's actually pretty cool because again coaching you get a plus one attack boost plus one defense boost and then bulk up same thing right so you can essentially go to plus two attack and defense uh, in one turn if you're able to set up set that up properly then you can swap in you know Rillaboom in this sense and then give yourself a grassy seed boost so this is this is really, uh, you know, making Serilege a win con here. So I like this a lot. Again, we mentioned the King Gambit Electabuzz duo, which is used on some other teams at the same time. Again, Vital Spirit, so important uh, against the Amoongus stuff, uh, which Sneezer sometimes has trouble dealing with because, again, the poison and the fighting covers doesn't really do too much against Amoongus's typing. Uh, and then again, Primarina uh, with that matchup for Haze. Sometimes Primarina struggles as a water type. I wonder if there's some better water types out there besides this thing. On a team like this but it's still pretty good for what it's supposed to do on a team like this uh moving down now we get some draggable play justin Karras. okay so looking at this again sneezer this one is the focus sass set with uh terra stellar again still fake out the typical trio with volk Primarina, and rillaboom there's the electabuzz here i like this a lot uh so again you have two of the fastest pokemon on your team you can slow other stuff down with electroweb you have redirection uh, which is really nice and again the volcarona is your win condition on this team so shout out to justin great job there uh nice squad then you run into this stuff down here similar similar ideas again it's just all about mixing and matching some of your cores 
Uh, 7 3 from Simone Sambito. Again, 24th place, but again, still strong results. Uh, now we have Salamence here. So, Choice Spec Salamence was an idea here. So, look, you got Intimidate on the team now. Um, you still have Focus Sash, Terra Stellar, Rillaboom here, Pre Marina at the same time, Gambit, uh, Electabuzz here. Uh, and then again, you have a Dragon type in this sense. Salamence, okay, situational, I would, I would say, but still can be good depending on the matchup. So, nice idea there. And then if you keep going down, you can still find more Sneezer teams. Look at this. 7-3 result. Look at how many Sneezer squads did well here. Um, so this one forgoes the Volcarona and instead adds the Clefable here. And then we still have King Gambit here uh, with the Black Glasses stuff. So um, all in all, pretty good squads. I wonder, is there one more that we missed? I think there was one more. I want to say there was one more. Don't quote me on it. No, there was not one more. All right, so a couple of strong Sneezer squads there. So now, uh, can we find some of the same stuff or maybe some variants uh, from Lab Mouse from other tournaments? Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, look at all the Sneezer teams that have done very well with the you know nice results here. Again, this is just over a span of like three weeks. Uh, look at this, 11-1, who is this? Okay, we got Garchomp Dragonite too, along with King Gavin. This is coaching Sneezer. Oh, Unburdened too. Wait, with the Sash? Interesting. Okay, I mean... Uh, I, I, I buy it. <laughs> Alright, then after that, we got Dandoza stuff with the Indeedy Choice Scarf idea. So, this is the Psychic Seed variant of Sneezer with Whimsicott. Makes a lot of sense. So, you deal a lot of aggression here uh, with Charizard and then Sneezer and Indeedy. Again, also, uh, you know, just expanding force, Tailwind stuff. Makes a lot of sense. This is actually one way to do it uh, with the Indeedy stuff. So, you have your Whimsicott. You could even put, like, Hisuian Typhlosion here. If you really want to, because that's another hot Pokemon that's running around right now. And then just use the Sneezer and the Indeedee. That's like a good start with the four-man core here. This is Dondoza without Tatsugiri. It's got the Yawn set with Fissure, so that's also a, a, a quite the option there. This one is just straight Dondozo. A um, couple of other teams here uh, that also use Dondozo, so that's pretty cool. Um, this one over here, this one is the Clefable Gambit set. Again, we've seen uh, this kind of team already. Um, there's another one over here that doesn't even use Dragapult. Again, this is still like your win cons, you know, with Volcarona, Rillaboom, Primarina, and then Electabuzz Gambit. So that's if you don't want to use Dragapult. We've already previewed that. Um, this one's, oh, this one's a pretty good one. Uh, again, another one where, yep, yeah, there it is. So there's Typhlosion, there's the Whimsicott, there's the Ndidi, here's the Sneezer, there's your Dondozo matchup with Haze, there's your Critmeister with the Razor Claw stuff, uh, and then Dragapult. Again, two of the fastest Pokemon on the same team, makes a lot of sense. Uh, then the Tyranitar stuff also intrigued me. So look at this. So even more Psy Spam stuff. But then look at this one from Asa Bear. Uh, you've got the same kind of core. Look, Rillaboom, Volcarona, King Gambit, Clefable, no water type. Again, give me weather control with Tyranitar. So interesting there. Sometimes not super great synergy because again, the sand uh, with the sash, you're breaking it. So I'm not so sure about that. Maybe, maybe even just... Um, Grassy Sea could even help you here. But again, I respect the Sash set. Sometimes you don't even bring Tyranitar. Um, but that's still also solid. This one uses Dragon Knight as opposed to Dragon Pult. Still also totally fine. Uh, you know, again, you could swap in uh, a couple of dragons in this uh, type of team technically. But I like this uh, as well. Uh, if you want to go that direction. Uh, Gambit, uh, Electabuzz, forgo the Volcarona, forgo the Dragon Pult, go with the Dragon Knight. And again, still the Grassy Seed set here with uh, you know, close combat, dire claw, fake out. Uh, again, makes a lot of sense. Let me find a couple more here that seem pretty interesting. Um, oh, this, well, okay. So how about some rain stuff? So this one, uh, you know, with the Pelipper, Basque Legion, Arkeladon idea. Then you add Murkrow here with rain nest. Then there's the white herb Sneasler, um, you know, again, with dire claw, throat chop here. So, you know, uh, you know, the close combat, you click that. Okay, sure. Then you click, then you have the white herb. Then you activate on burden. Kind of, I see it, I see it, so I respect that. I have seen a few white herb sneezers, so uh, there's an example of where you can find it. But overall, you know, I think a lot of the, the teams here have a lot of similar cores. It's just one or two Pokemon that make all the difference. Uh, but again, uh, you know, we've we referenced some of the more popular stuff. So we kind of have an idea of where we want to go with the sneezer. So now let's go ahead, let's go back into Showdown, and let's build a couple of sneezer squads. Okay, so let's start here with this five-man core. So we have Sneezer with the Fire, Water, Grass stuff. We've got Electabuzz here. Uh, and then uh, let's add the Dragapult back here again. So just so that we can stay true with what we wanted to do uh, with this kind of squad. Again, just have two of the fastest mods in the format on the same team, especially when you're activating Unburdened. But uh, this type of set, we're just going to go 
with the sash set and and you know terra stellar and poison touch i think that's still okay then you can just go simple 252 252 here uh, i think that's uh still totally fine as far as like the pull tier again it's going to be bandit pull bandit pull is so strong here uh this time around and again with so many little fairies besides pre marina and the occasional whimsicott uh you're looking pretty good here with the dragon dart stuff it's gonna do a lot of damage phantom force too uh then outrage for just raw damage just like dragon knight can do and then you turn uh for your pivot and here's the key with this type of team okay i just want to say this the fact that you have two u-turners makes a huge difference especially when you have double fake out option on your team you can stall out potential tailwinds and, and trick rooms for that matter by resetting terrain and then also recycling your fake outs and then again you have protect here so that's going to help you a lot so just be mindful of that like the fact that you can always pivot especially with dragapult you know a fast hard hitting pivot is always good you know deal some chip damage and come back later uh, is very very useful in that sense all right but other than that standard stuff with the real boom assault vest here with terra fire uh and you know fake out grassy glide uh u-turn and then of course the wood hammer idea dragon pull tier again you can keep it as terra dragon just do a bunch more damage uh if you go terra ghost here then i think you go terra blast terra ghost if you decide to do that route but um over here pre marina uh again of course liquid voice we got it right this time then you can add the throat spray set uh, you know with terra grass i also technically like terra steel so this is my adaptation if there's going to be a lot more sneezers around and then you know they're going for like their poison moves uh then we're going to go terra steel uh as a way around that so let's go terra steel premium i've seen this a little bit um in recent weeks so let's go that direction hyper voice moonblast haze and then protect over here volcarona uh secretly can be the star of the show uh, leftovers over here. Don't bring this into Tyranitar games. It gets a little tricky. <laughs> Heat Wave. If you want Fiery Dance or Flamethrower, so be it. K Giga Drain, Quiver Dance, and Protect over here. Terra Dragon is still my favorite set on Volcarona. Uh, if you like Terra Grass, you can definitely consider Terra Grass at the same time. You know, stronger Giga Drain for that matter. Um, then the Electabuzz here. So again, Vital Spirit. And you can't go to sleep, which is quite nice. The uh, Violet. Make this thing super bulky. Uh, then follow me, Electro Web Taunt, and then Standard Protect. I do like Terra Ghost here sometimes. Uh, I've also seen Terra Water uh, on occasion, but at the same time, you know, I still think the Ghost idea uh, still makes a lot of sense. Okay, so this is it. This is the squad. So again, double fake out here with the Sneezer and the Rillaboom. We have the Redirection, uh, and then the Volcarona could potentially just sweep uh, in the potential end games, and then Dragapult. Uh, can just come in along with Sneezer, be really fast, do tons of chip damage early on. Uh, so this way we can even get to that point uh, in the end game stuff. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and let's do some EV spreads and let's get let's try out the team. Okay, let's start over here with the uh, Electabuzz actually. So we're gonna go full on bulk here, obviously because this is a support Pokemon and we just need this thing to stay on the field and be annoying with follow me Electro Webs, right? So let's go bolt here. Uh, look at that physical defense, not so great. Uh, we can always max the HP, which is okay, but special defense is not bad, okay? And this speed actually helps you a little bit in, depending on the circumstance. We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, but let's invest into this defense. Let's go second bump here uh, in terms of our set here, which I believe is 110. So again, this is the second EV bump on the Electabuzz here. So, uh, you know, actually, a uh, no, actually, no, this is uh, the, the third one. Uh, yeah, it's already here. Okay, so yeah, this is the third bump actually, <laughs> right? The first one I believe was at like 20 investment. Yeah, it was at 20. So 20, 80, uh, and then right here at 180. So again, if you don't know what EV bumps are, um, make sure you comment below asking what are EV bumps because it is a very fundamental skill to understand in creating advanced spreads like this. Uh, and if you haven't watched our video yet on how to optimize EV spreads, make sure you go back uh, a couple of weeks in the channel and find our video that says how to optimize EV spreads. I show you exactly how to do it. I go over the template and I go through a few examples of how to do this. It's free knowledge, so give that a watch if you haven't done so already. Otherwise, comment below what are EV bumps and I will reply to you and respond to you and hopefully my uh, definition makes sense, okay? But anyway, let's go to the second bump here. We don't really need special attack, obviously, because you know we're not really meant to do damage. We're just here to support. Let's put one point there. And what I really want to do is actually just have enough speed here for Pelipper, right? Because look at this. It actually already almost does it. And now all you have to do is just go to 130 and you can outspeed the Timid Pelippers, which is useful. And then you can just Electro Web those things 
uh, or even taunt it for before they can even go for their own Tailwind, which is kind of nice. And then after that, you just dump the rest into Special Defense. We have nice even numbers for the Avilite. This is 110. This is also 110. So in the end, we have equal bulk, which is really, really nice. Max HP, perfect. Okay. Uh, the Sneezer, like we said, this is 252. Let's go Adamant here. I think this is still okay. Uh, Adamant Sneezer, it still outspeeds base 100s. So you outspeed Garchomp, which is important. Uh, so that's fine there. Dragapult, like we said here. Uh, again, just abandoned Dragapult set. Let's go Jolly here. Uh, make the meta dictate us. Uh, and then after that, Rillaboom here. So, you know, just, uh, again, adamant nature. I want to be faster than the Blood Moons that are on those Tailwind teams. So let's go to 115 speed investment uh, to outspeed those Blood Moons. And then just go max damage here with adamant nature. And then go to 132 investment to get the 192 HP number. This is going to optimize your HP uh, for grassy terrain recovery because again it's a factor of 16 if you do some quick math 192 divided by 16 perfectly 12 uh hp recovery every turn let's make sure we get an even number in the special defense department so let's go uh 92 there right again we have the assault vest anything times 1.5 uh you know for, for that value if it's an odd number will be a decimal we don't want decimals i don't want my bulk to round down i want it to be perfectly even so let's go with 92. Now we have an even number. An even number times 1.5 will always be a solid whole number. Perfect. Uh, then after that, just 36 EVs. Dump the rest here. That's really all there is that's left over. It's okay. Um, the Prim Arena. Again, the whole goal with Prim is to outspeed the Adamant Max Speed Dondozo so you can haze them first. Um, normally, all you need is about 60 speed, right? So this way you can outspeed them. Again, 176. But let's do a little speed creeping a little bit. Let's go to 90. And then this way we can outspeed uh, Mousehold after potentially two uh, Electro Webs here. So I'll still go for that sense. Uh, then at the end of the day, we can still go for the Rillaboom Calc and Survive Grassy Glide, which is just about this much, right? 52 investment. That's all you need. I want to go to 108. Again, for the second bump there, 176 mark, uh, you know, with the plus one. Nice solid even number there. These 28 EVs, they don't really matter a whole lot. You can put them here and then just, in fact, Invest the rest here into defense and then just a little bit more bulk for your value. Uh, and that's our premier in a set. Bulk Corona, main thing here, I want to outspeed another Dragapult after one Quiver Dance. So, you know, 214 divided by 1.5. I do need 144. So that's the number I'm going to hit. All right. So after one qu Quiver Dance, we outspeed the fastest type of Dragapult. Um, just the first bump here in Modest Nature. Then we go to 192. Uh, HP here, so this will optimize not only for the grassy terrain recovery, uh, but also for my leftovers recovery. One point here in Spadef for the nice even number for the Quiver Dance, and then just dumping the rest here into regular defense. And that's really all there is left over. Okay, so this is it. These are just some quick EVs that we made uh, just to get the squad going, uh, just so that we can get onto ladder and start testing. Uh, but it makes a lot of sense, right? Again, from the data, the Firewater Grass Core just makes a lot of sense. Then you have a Redirector and the Electabuzz, nice into Amoongus stuff. Uh, and then at the end of the day, Dragapult uh, just does so much damage with the Dragon Darts and the U-Turn stuff with the Rillaboom, able to pivot in and out. So you have good positional ideas here. So hopefully this makes sense. Let's go ahead and let's play a couple of games. All right, this is Whimsicott High Flosion stuff. So at first I thought this was like the Wolf Click team, but it is not. Uh, there is a Clefairy here over here. So he's got a couple of Violent users with Friend Guard, um, very interestingly enough. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, Sneezer can look good pre uh, to an extent here. Uh, I also have Pult that can also do well here. Uh, I just uh, am afraid a little bit of the Typhlosion stuff. I do want to keep the Rillaboom uh, for the Blood Moon. I think that's going to be important per se. So I kind of want to just lead it like that. So I'm going to go with Prim to resist the Typhlosion stuff. And then I'm going to go vote Rillaboom here. He goes Whimsicott and the Annihilate actually. So uh, not quite what I wanted, but there's the Terra Fire. So we force the Fire Terra immediately, right? So he doesn't die to Hyper Voice. And he goes first and he actually just removes my Primarina, but that's okay um, because now I can deal some chip damage into Whimsicott. I'm going to go into Sneezer and I'm also going to go uh, right here into my Pult. So uh, again, he can click Tailwind if he wants, but again, this is also why I click Fake Out. He forced uh, the Fire Terror, so that means I can Fake it out. He goes for Moonblast. Um, that's fine. Now I can potentially take out the Annihilate here if I if I can. Um, a little bit more Grassy Terrain Recovery. There's the Tailwind. I'm going to... And he clicks Rage, so he forgets about that interaction, right? So I wanted to just remove the Whimsicott so he doesn't have Tailwind in the endgame. 
and I click Dire Claw there, we get a nice pair on there. So there's the value of Sneezer already, but he forgot about how that interaction works. But he, he's probably also just setting up the Typhlosion here for the Eruption stuff. So I'm just going to protect Sneezer. All right, he goes for the Eruption. That's still fine. My Pult still uh, will outspeed that Annihilate here. All right, so I'm just going to go Phantom Force again. All right, so now we can potentially just pick up this KO ideally. And I don't want to just lose the Sneezer now. He goes into the Blood Moon there, but that's okay. I'm going to go Terra Stellar. Um, and that's a good switch, right? So I just want to remove the Annihilate here. So smart switch for them, right? Getting in the Blood Moon for free with the Tailwind. Um, but again, his Tailwind turns are numbered here. And there's the Typhlosion. So he can do this now if he wants. Uh, but I'm just going to forego the Rillaboom and get the Dragapult later in the end game, where I can outspeed all of these Mons. I'm just going to protect Sneezer too. So uh, again, I don't die to the Typhlosion. So Rillaboom, thank you for your service. Still fine. I still have all that I need because we forced the Terra early. So we can close combat this Ursaluna right now. So there's the Phantom Force again. Goodbye, Ursaluna. See you later. Typhlosion, you can do whatever you want. Uh, I, again, the Sneezer dropping doesn't matter. Uh, because again, I know the item that you have. You're not Sash at all. You just died to Phantom Force. Your Tailwind in the early game did not matter. We were able to stall it. And because we had the faster Pokemon in the end, we win the game. Okay, this one's a little bit of a passive team, you know, opposite of the other one. Grimstone Ensign, uh, you know, just mitigating damage here. He does have Blood Moon and the Goldengo, so there's that. Then there, for some reason, uh, we have the Flamigo. I'm not really sure what the Flamigo is supposed to do, but I think that's the odd one out there. That's a strange Pokemon on that kind of team. But anyway, um, so he's going to lead things with Grimstone Ensign, right? The classic Sword and Shield. Uh, lead there for damage mitigation, fake out screen stuff. I'm going to try and set up the Volcarona if I can. Uh, he intimidates the Sneezer, but that's okay. I just want to stop screens. But he ends up just being Covert Cloak Grimmsnarl. So no Light Clay, interesting enough. And he has Taunt there. Uh, so there's the screen. So if he has Screens and Taunt, then that means no Thunder Wave and no Parting Shot. So it's probably just Spirit Break too, right? So we removed the Ensign. We close combated it. It lived, but that's fine. He goes Blood Moon here. He goes Terra Normal. I'm just going to protect Sneezer so I don't die. And there's the Reflect. It goes up. But again, uh, no coat, no um, you know Light Clay. So those turns are limited. Hyper Voice does a lot, but not that much to Volk still. Uh, but again, I still have to be aware of the Taunt. And I want to get my Volk run a little bit more recovery. So I'm going to protect, get some HP back uh, you know, from the terrain and my leftovers. And then we could potentially KO this Ursaluna right here with the Wood Hammer. Uh, if he stays in right so that's my logic there uh, and then from there we can just have Volcorn and do some chip damage but he goes into gold dango so good swap there imagine if i just heat rave right there right now so great swap there he plays me um you know and he gets the gold dango in for free more or less and he gets to you know drop my damage uh but at the end of the day that gold dango has been chipped quite a bit okay to the point where i even still think uh a heat wave can pick it up there so there is the make it rain he crits my rillaboom unfortunately um, I have this self as, but that's unfortunate for me, but Heat Wave does still do good damage. I do get a nice timely burn on the Goldengo, uh, and then Spirit Break, again, you know, doing a lot of damage. But Volcarona is still hanging tough here. I'm getting a lot of HP back, which is nice. Uh, so now I can go into my Sneasler, and really I'm just trying to get more health back on my Volk. Uh, he goes for Light Screen again, and now I'm just going to go for Tire Claw and remove the Grimstone. So now all the Taunt stuff is going to be gone. Uh, the Sneezer actually just hangs on here because the Goldango was minus one. And he's trapped here at minus two Goldango. And he's taking Burn Chip. You know, again, the train's helping him out a little bit. But now he's got Blood Moon here. He already committed the Terra. I just click Close Combat. It's dead. Okay, your screens are gone. And now, again, the Make It Rain is still going to kill the Sneezer. But Volcarona still stays in. Uh, and then we just click Heat Wave and we end the game. So even though my Volcarona never really got set up, he never really could get rid of it because we got a lot of recovery from Grassy Terrain and the leftover stuff. And we were able to alternate our protects and we were able to preserve it. And Sleezer came in and did what it needed to do. It removed the threat to Volcarona, more or less, the Grimstone and even the Ursaluna. And then after that, uh, against Goldango, the rest was history. Another variant that we can use here, again, mixing and matching the pieces like we saw from some of the results from the VR Tour as well as Lab Mouse. We can go the King Gambit idea along with this, the Clefable uh, secondary fairy, right? So we can do that. Clefable and the King Gambit here. Again, another good solid dark type here. Uh, and 
we'll still go black classes, right? Of course, we'll keep the Assault Fist on the Rillaboom here. Uh, with Kowtow Cleave, uh, Sucker Punch, the Swords Dance, uh, and then, of course, the Protect over here. So we've got Double Fake Out and a Redirector uh, to make King Gambit uh, a pretty decent win con in, in some cases, right? We have Priority Sucker Punches or even just Kowtow Cleaves uh, just doing tons of damage overall. But at the end of the day, um, you can also go with the Clefable here with, again, Unaware, really, really nice. Safety Goggles, Clefable, uh, pretty good there. Then you just do like Follow Me, Helping Hand, Moonblast, and then Protect. Uh, the one thing you can do on the Prim Arena, you can even make this more aggressive. You can go Life Orb Prim and just make an adjustment uh, with the EV spreads here going 179. And then just adding a little bit more bulk like this uh, in terms of physical damage. But the Clefable here, the set that I've got for you uh, is a Calm Nature set. So we'll go 172 HP investment. Uh, for the Rillaboom Grassy Terrain, optimal number, which is 192. We'll max the defense like this. Then we'll go first bump here, 76 Spidef. Uh, This is going to survive Modest Glamora Sludge Bomb. Okay, good count there. And then you just put the rest into uh, special attack and speed, right? So that's really all we need out of Clefable. Uh, and then after that, everything is pretty much the same. Now, the only thing you can do here is actually uh, change it up a little bit. If you don't want the Sash, if you want to go the Unburdened stuff, you definitely can. So you can do the Grassy Seed um, uh, Unburdened idea. So now you can have basically your own Inherent Tailwind at the end of the day. So you can still do it like this. Uh, and then this would be a second variant of a squad. So, you know, when I did the coaching session with uh, the viewer, uh, they wanted to take a different direction slightly uh, with the squad and still go with this, which is still proven and consistent. So we gave them this one. Uh, and it still works relatively fine. Uh, so let's look at some games with this one. Okay, this is some sand stuff here, but he's got double dragon uh, with Dragapult and Dragon. I don't think you need two dragons on a sand team. I think one is enough, uh, but he's got Volcarona and uh, that, that also means he does have an end game con. So we have to be aware of that. But Sneezer actually looks pretty decent here. You know, not only just Excadrill, but also Tyranitar. Uh, to an extent and you know we could even do some big damage into the Volcarona with the Dire Claw stuff right so uh, again we just have to make sure we're in the right spot so I'm gonna go Sneasler here I'm gonna go Rillaboom I'm gonna try and get my Grassy Seed going there there is Talonflame and Dragonite so I don't want to get E-Speeded or Brave Birded immediately on my Sneezer. I know that's the prime target that he wants so I'm just gonna protect it here and just try and hit the D-Knight but he goes the upper hand stuff that's so much damage onto his D-Knight that's exactly what he wanted to do. So now this is a free Woodhammer KO into his Dina. Don't do the upper hand stuff, guys. Okay, but he still had a chance to win despite all of that. Okay, now he goes Volcarona. Okay, then I, I have to go Terrify Rule. I don't want to just die. Uh, the Brave Bird doesn't kill because we have our defense bulk. So that's great. Dire Claw, good damage. I, he gets poisoned. Um, I had a chance to KO this Volk, but I called this wrong. And I just U-turn. I wanted to get out and reposition. So I'm going to go into King Gambit. I do have priority Sucker Punch here, but the problem is he's got upper hand, which is annoying. Stop using upper hand Talonflame, guys. All right, so I'm just going to try and protect my Sneezer here. Um, he protects his bulk, which is smart. So my Sucker Punch doesn't even work, um, but he just wants to set up his Tailwind. Smart play from him, um, all things considered. But at the end of the day, uh, there's the upper hand. And now that he has Tailwind, he outspeeds me, and then he clicks Heat Wave. And he kills me, right? So unfortunate for him. Great turn for him. Great turn for him. He turns this around a little bit uh, because all I have left is a Rillaboom and a Primarina. But that might be all that I need. Uh, so I'm just going to protect Primarina. I have to make some reads here. He does try the upper hand and I knew he would. So that's why I didn't go for Grassy Glide. Instead, just a Wood Hammer there. Uh, if he had gone for the Rillaboom, I would have just lost. But I have to make that read there. Uh, that means he has only the extra drill left in the bank. And that's not enough. There is the Brave Bird. We have both there. He goes Earthquake. Rillaboom lives. So does Primarina. Physical investment coming in clutch. Woodhammer does not kill. But guess what does kill? Hyper Voice. Especially if it's a Life Orb set. So we're able to walk out of here uh, with the win. Despite having a not great turn 4. Alright. So this one has the Goldengo Garchomp Murkrow Core. Along with T-Char Sand. The only thing I don't understand is the rest of his team. He's got Charizard and Meowskarada here. Very interesting. I don't know about that. Um, I But at the end of the day, look, Unburdened Sneezer uh, can just outspeed a lot of what he has here. And it looks pretty good. The only thing we got to really worry about, per se, is the, the Charizard uh, at the end of the day. So I think we're fine in this sense. So he's going to go Meowskarada and Charizard. Why he does this, I'm not quite sure in the beginning. 
But I went with Rillaboom and my Dragapult here, just again, because I have fast Pokemon here. So I fake out Meowth I just wanted to go raw Outrage. And, you know, I don't get the Charizard, but I do pick up the Meowth This is Fire Pledge. That tells me he's going for the Fire Pledge Grass Pledge stuff, which is interesting. But again, you know, just keep the Rillaboom for the late game. Tailwind comes out. There's the Fire Pledge again. But, you know, again, raw Outrage just dominating here. Already two KOs, two turns. The Charizard is a sitting duck here. He does have Garchomp under Tailwind now. So he can do this. Uh, I probably shouldn't have just protected here. I probably should have just been aggressive. I know he specs. He wants to Bolt, I know. I could have just easily Hyper Voiced here. So that's a misplay on my part. Uh, but at the end of the day, we still have so much uh, in this sense, right? So there's my Sneezer. I'm going to fake up Chomp so he doesn't get attack off. Fire Pledge does not KO. Uh, and then Hyper Voice will, right? So there it is. And now he just left with Chomp, one more turn of Tailwind. But it doesn't really matter because Sneezer outspeeds everything that he has. Uh, because my Unburden makes me faster than him. So there's the Rillaboom. Again, we, we met our investments. So there's, again, another close combat. Goodbye, Garchomp. It was nice knowing you. Uh, and again, you're going to have to face that. A Tailwind, Garchomp versus an Unburden Sneezer. Uh, you're going to win that matchup. I also forgot to show you the King Gambit EVs by accident because I got a little carried away with, um, you know, what I was trying to show. But anyway, this is just uh, Adamant 252 King Gambit. I want to have uh, some outspeed scenarios against other base 50s that don't have investment. Uh, so I just put a little bit of points there, one point in the bulk, and then just literally dump the rest uh, into my EVs over there. Another variation is to just use this without the Dragon Bolt entirely. So if you wanted to just make it strictly Sneezler stuff, uh, they can still do the Fire Water Grass Core here, you know, with Primarina, Rillaboom, uh, and Volcarona, and then just go with Electabuzz, King Gambit. These two together are quite good, especially, you know, against a lot of the ghost types, like Typhlosion, Goldango, uh, running around. So you can, you know, slow them down like that. Uh, I also have found that, a let, you know, Terra Water is useful for that kind of scenario where you can just resist uh, the eruption stuff and then survive, you know, either get off a Taunt or an Electro Web to slow it down, and then... Uh, let stuff like Volcarona set up uh, and outspeed those threats uh, with Quiver Dance. You might even need a second one to do that. Uh, if you if you want to also go for the Taunt, you can also consider that. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I do like this variant as well. You can also consider Grassy Seed on this. Uh, if you don't want the uh, Focus Sash here, then you would just have to go with the Unburden idea. Um, so you can just do that. I, I remember when I was testing it, I, for I forgot to change it. Right, so it was just like grassy seed with the uh, poison touch, but it still works out. So you can definitely do it like this, and this is still another way uh, of building around Sneezer. Again, just taking out the Pult and just focusing around the Sneezer stuff. Again, uh, the double fake out idea, the setup that you have here uh, with King Gambit and Volcarona, uh, along with the redirection with Electabuzz, just makes a lot of sense. There's some good pieces uh, like we've established, so let's take a look at this one. All right, so this one was an interesting one. So he's got Talonflame, Goldango stuff, but then he's got Araquanid, and he's got the Hisuian Decidueye. So, you know, some slow options. I think you could have chosen some better uh, stuff there for a team like this, but uh, he's still got some other four solid pieces. So I, I would have liked to either see, like, Decidueye or even the Araquanid with maybe a Trick Room Setter here, uh, but uh, he's, he's opting for the Double Grass type. So uh, at the end of the day, I still think Sneezer looks good. Uh, so does King Gambit for that matter. This is where, you know, Electabuzz King Gambit can help you out here because, uh, you know, his big hitters, Dragapult and Goldengo, uh, they're not going to like the King Gambit all that much. So, you know, you almost kind of force him to not bring those two. And that's actually what ended up happening. He just did not bring Dragapult and the Goldengo and was reliant on the Araquanid and the uh, Hisuian Decidueye. And that's just not enough. So we'll see how we play this. But there, there's the talent fame, and he goes with Araquanid. So that's like a strange lead, right? So um, Electabuzz and the Gambit here. So this is where the Terra Water pays dividends in this sense. Not intentional for this first burst, but it works out here. Um, so there's the taunts on us, but again, that's still fine. Uh, all I needed is one follow me because I just want to set up the King Gambit um, Swords Dance just to just sucker punch that thing out of existence. So I'm just going to protect this turn. Even if he KOs Electabuzz here, it's fine. He goes for the Gambit instead. That's fine because now we can click Electroweb. And now we chip the Talonflame, which is nice. And we get a speed drop on the Araquanid there. So Sucker Punch does put that thing uh, out of its misery. Again, the Electro does do well there. And we almost pick up the KO. They're really unfortunate there, but still good. 
All right, so now he goes into the Decidueye. I'm going to protect Gambit again. And Brave Bird survives, so the the, the Talonflame takes itself out. So Electabuzz Gambit, uh, you know, again, picking up two KOs here. But you see how awkward this is for him? So, uh, again, speed drop. There is still one turn of Tailwind, uh, and I lose my Electabuzz. So I get a free switch. Rillaboom comes out, and so do I. Uh, and I kind of get this wrong because I thought I would have the faster fake out here, but it ends up not working here. Uh, I could have even sucker punched here, but it didn't work out. So, um, wrong. I call it wrong, but that's okay because I still have the sneezer in the back um, to finish this game off, and there's no more Tailwind. So, there's my defense, uh, and then there's my Inverna stuff. So, goodbye, uh, Decidueye. And now he can't beat the sneezer anymore because we have a defense boost, and he doesn't have anything for it. We're just trading U turns here, but. Uh, again, this is pretty easy at, at this point in the end game. So, you know, the, the, the Sneezer as the end game win con uh, pays dividends here. Okay, so this is a, a pretty weird Dondozo team. So he's got Dondozo, Tatsugiri, Whimsicott, Typhlosion, and Weezing, Slacking. So it's like 2-2-2 two, 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 Dondozo, but this is not a good 2-2-2 two, 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 Dondozo. But he actually plays it pretty decently. But uh, he has to kind of pick the four that he wants. And, you know, it just really depends on how he wants to play it. So I'm just going to try and play as balanced as I can. He's going with the, the eruption stuff. So here's my Electabuzz and here is Volcarona. I feel like this was the best kind of lead I could have done against something like this. But this is also where, like, the, the Dragon Volcarona pays off here. So eruption, not quite enough. All right. And I'm going to go for the Quiver Dance. And this is where, like, the Electroweb helps me. But I want to taunt first so he can't go for the Sunny Day stuff and boost his Typhlosion anymore. Moonblast does a bit. It doesn't drop me, which is great. Eruption, again, more damage. Electabuzz hangs on, which is nice. There's another Quiver Dance here. And this is where I get to also get off an E-Webs there. So that's nice. Uh, and now this is where Volcarona kind of looks okay here. He protects Typhlosion. That's cool. Um, I want to follow me. So I redirect the Moonblast. And now I can just click Heat Wave and remove the Whimsicott. So no more Tailwind, at least for one more turn, because I can always click um protect one last time so there's the dondozo so that means that's tatsugiri's in the back pre marina looks good here against dondozo again i have the haze idea he protects dondozo i protect volcarona um and also actually i just wanted to stall one more turn of tailwind um and this is where i kind of had to make a call you know obviously you know he wants to go terra grass in front of my giga drain and he calls it so i get this wrong i should have just clicked heat wave uh and then just you know did moonblast with the pre marina just to get both worlds in but I end up not making that play, and I do pay for it because Volcarona goes splat when it didn't need to go splat. So, you know, uh, devastating, but not all lost because I do have Sneezer here. He goes into Tatsugiri now, um, but this is still fine at the end of the day because I still outspeed him. You know, I can click Fake Out, I can click Haze, uh, which I should have done, but I went for Hyper Voice instead because, you know, I called it wrong with the Typhlosion on uh, staying in. But this that's where Haze would have been really handy. Fake Out Haze. I get it wrong, so I got two turns wrong here, but I do get Dire Claw Sleep, which is great because now I can remove the Dondozo and remove the Tatsugiri all in one turn, which is how you have to play Dondozo. You have to remove both in one turn, and now this ends up working out for me. So goodbye, Tatsugiri, and now he's just left with Typhlosion here, and it's over because we stalled out his Tailwind, and now it's just a, a two-on-one. He can't beat both. Another Dire Claw there. Uh, I give it, he gets a poison, so that's cool. And then again, eruption, not enough. I don't know why he clicked that. He should have just clicked Heat Wave. Uh, that would have gave him the best possible chance to win. But uh, Pre Marina just cleans up anyway. Uh, so, yeah. So, let's show you a, one more variant here. So, this way you get the best of all worlds. We've shown you Dragapult, Fire Water, Grass stuff. We showed you something without Dragapult, which is almost the same thing. Uh, but now let's show you the Psychic Seed. So, we showed you Sash, we showed you Grassy Seed. Uh, and now we're going to show you Psychic Seed. So this is like the Hyper Offense Expanding Force stuff that you could do with the Ndidi Mail, which is something that you normally don't see, but it still works. So this is how you kind of build the squad. It's same thing. You do Whimsicott stuff with Tailwind, okay? Then you do like High Speed Expanding Force. Uh, and again, the Psychic Seed gives it a special defense boost, so that's cool. Then you just do like Eruption stuff with the Typhlosion, right? And then at the end of the day, you still have your Dragapult here, which again, Whimsicott, Dragapult. So again, you have all the speed on your side. Uh, and then this has the Imprisoned Trick Room stuff, so you can deny that. Uh, and then again, uh, Psychic Terrain, you deny priority moves against the Typhlosion and even the Dragapult here. So it might seem weird to have two ghosts, but it still works out because this is technically like your Dragon type here. 
and then finally you need like a little bit for the dondozo stuff so let's get a haze user i think and then again you know the grass stuff also is quite nice i think that the cgy also works out here uh because again the triple arrows haze uh you know with the crit stuff is also quite strong so you might as well just go with that and i think this is uh the way to go uh, with something like this if i had to use the indeedy stuff okay so here's the sneezer with the psychic seeds so let's just optimize this a little bit uh you could just go straight 252 252 that's still okay another thing you can also consider is just to go up to about 220 speed because again you got tailwind on your side now right so you could go 220 that's going to outspeed base 100s and then 12 spin def just to get a nice even number there for your special defense which is also not bad right because again a lot of the format is special attackers so that's good just put to the bump here in terms of the attack stat 36 investment here will optimize against rillaboom grassy terrain just in case uh you know they want to use that against your your indeedy stuff and then dark type there with you know dark uh with throat chop is actually quite nice does a lot of damage indeedy here standard terra psychic expanding force shenanigans nuke things Whimsicott here, so, you know, Covert Cloak, um, you know, with Terra Ghost is also quite nice. Again, you, you could even just swap in your terrain to, to stop against Fake Out. But again, Moonblast, Sunny Day, Encore, standard stuff that you would get out of Whimsicott. Typhlosion, again, with the Blaze, uh, you can just do uh, just typical choice spec stuff here. You know, just straight offense, Eruption, uh, and then at the end of the day, you could still do like Heat Wave, Shadow Ball. Uh, and then overheat for your single target play and that's still like okay dragapult here choice band so a lot of choice items here but choice band uh again dragon darts uh phantom force is still strong then you can do u-turn again your pivot option and then you could do uh I'll, I'll show you another option you could just still do terra blast terra ghost here all right this is still like okay you know single target ghost move is still all right uh besides like the phantom force stuff so you can definitely do that. Or you can still do like the Outrage stuff if you want. I still like totally good. Uh, the Decidueye here. So again, Leaf Blade, uh, Triple Arrows, the Haze, and of course the Protector. So this is quite nice. So just in case, you know, teams want to intimidate the Sneasler here, you can always just haze that away. But again, this is mostly for the Dondozo stuff. Uh, and you can just go like Terrifier here against the Fairy Shenanigans, right? So that's Leafage. You know, that, that I meant um, for Leaf Blade. Okay. Um, so we already established this. So Whimsicott, just make this super bulky. Again, you can just do 244, 252 here. Again, just being super fast, but super bulky. Um, that's all you really want out of your Whimsicott. Typhlosion, same thing. You know, again, just doing as much damage as you can with uh, a lot of speed investments is, is good. Dragon, like this team is literally 252, 252 at the end of the day. Like you could even do Adam in Nature. You could do Jolly. Either way, it's still okay. Uh, and the Decidueye, this is the only one where like I was doing stuff. Uh, Adam in Nature here. Let's go about 212. Um, because again, under Tailwind, we outspeed another Dragapult. And then that allows me to hit it, um, you know, with the, the triple arrows and scrappy stuff, right? So that's also quite nice. So at the end of the day, uh, we have what we need. And then just go to the bump here and just put one point in the bulk. And then the rest can just go into your HP. But you can even do... Uh, wait, no, you can just max this out. Just go like this. I think this is still like good. All right. We want a little bit more damage, uh, out of our, our option there. Okay. So this is it. This is the, <laughs> this is the size spam version. I'll, we'll call it Sneasler size spam, right? You have the denial with imprisoned trick room. You have a bunch of offense here with tailwind eruption, dragon dart stuff. The decidueye comes in and does, uh, you know, for your Dondozo matchup for that matter, but at the end of the day, it's still okay. So let's let's test it out real quick. All right, one quick test battle. This video is long enough already. So uh, this one, he's using Electabuzz 2 with Volcarona, Rillaboom stuff, but he's got Blastoise here and 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 Men. So I don't know what the Blastoise is supposed to do here, but uh, maybe it's just Water Spout stuff. I have Fake Out, Icy Wind. I have no idea. But uh, you're, we're definitely gonna get value out of, out of the Indeedee here. Just again using the terrain to our advantage. Uh, you know, it's gonna help out with the hyper offense stuff. Uh, and then who knows what the Salamence has. It could be Tailwind, but, uh, and it ends up being Tailwind, right? So I'm going to go Whimsicott and Typhlosion, force him to go against that. He goes Salamence and Rillaboom here. So the Salamence can resist the eruption, but the Rillaboom cannot, which means one thing and one thing only, he has to go with his Terra turn one. So he burns it immediately, and that ends up helping us later on because 
Uh, that means no Terra for his other Pokemon. So Eruption still does decent damage into Salamence because we get a crit. He goes for Tailwind. Um, but now we just have to reposition our Typhlosion for the end game. So I'm going to go Indeedee here, change the terrain on him. Um, he protects Ments, which is okay, because I was going for the KO onto that thing. And then the Rillaboom just goes Grassy Glide there. Uh, you know, not much damage, but uh, still enough for chipping my Indeedee tab. So I go Terra Psychic here, actually. I wanted to go like straight violence here with this expanding force. Even with Helping Hand, I don't even think I pick up that Rillaboom there. So that ends up being bad for me. So um, in that sense, oops. But he goes into Electabuzz here, and now I have Typhlosion, and now I outspeed everything. So now I can just go Sunny Day, and now I can click Eruption, and things melt. Electabuzz, unfortunately, does not go down here, so that's uh, unfortunate for me because I was already chipped. But he goes into Salamence again, um, but this is still fine because, again, Follow Me comes out here. I remove the Electabuzz, um, which is okay. Force him to click Follow Me. He crits my Typhlosion, so I guess crit for crit is fair, but guess who we have in the endgame to close it out? He goes Rillaboom, I get Sneezer, I get my 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 seed bonus, so that's great because he was going to override it with his Tyrain. So there's the fake out, I just wanted to protect myself against that. He doesn't protect the Salamence, so down goes the Mence, and now Sneezer is just free to finish everything off here. He, you know, because now all we have to do is click CC, and now we say see you uh, later. <laughs> Okay, so let's just recap uh, the four squads here. But I even threw in one more variation uh, just because it's still more or less some of the same pieces. But I still want to throw it in there just because it's still uh, also okay. So this was the first one we did, right? Sneezer, Dragapult with the Fire, Water, Grass Core. And then you have the Electabuzz here. Uh, again, this is a pretty standard way of looking at it. Sash Sneezer with the Poison Touch is strong. Uh, and we've also shown you some other Grassy Seed stuff. So this one, Grassy Seed Sneezer with the Rillaboom. Uh, again, foregoing the Volcarona and the Electabuzz, instead going the Double Fairy with Cliff Fable and here with King Gambit, but this King Gambit does not have a EV spread. Uh, so let me just slap that on there when I put it in the video paste, right? Then this one is just without, you could even, yeah, this is the one we use, you could just copy paste it. This one was without the Dragapult. This is just a Sneezer with a Fire Water Grass Cord. Then with King Gambit and Electabuzz, you could just use this if you want, uh, or uh, you could do the Psy Spam stuff uh no not the size stone so this is the oh actually this is the variation i did not show you or build in the video this is pulse sneezer but um again with gambit and electabuzz but also rillaboom and pre-marina right so again you could do something like this with the sash poison touch stuff uh and then of course the size spam variants not maybe not as popular as some of the rillaboom balance stuff but still hyper offensive still strong uh again in prison trick room um you know dire cloth close combat terra dark throat chop Whimsicott doing what it needs to do with Typhlosion, clicking Tailwind, clicking Eruption, and then Dragapult is just really fast, uh, you know, especially with uh, Redirection support. I'm sorry, not Redirection, the, the Tailwind support, uh, and then even Helping Hand from the Indeedee, right? So uh, you could swap in the Indeedee at a timely King Gambit Sucker Punch or even like Jet Punch stuff. I haven't seen too much Palafin in a hot minute, um, but you could definitely do that. And then, of course, the Sidui comes... Uh, when you play against Dondozo teams or even against our, our Keladin teams for that matter. Okay, so there it is. Five Sneasler teams today. Oh my goodness, five. If, again, if you need help building squads for Regulation H, okay, if you're going to a local soon and you need some help and you're not sure where to start, uh, feel free to sign up for coaching on the channel. Tier 3 sub gets you a one-on-one -on -one session with me where we can build the squad like I did today with all of these teams. Uh, and then uh, build it the way that you want it. Uh, so this way you can have the team that you want to use for whatever purpose that you need it for. Okay. Um, so if you look in the video description, there's a link to join the channel with the tier three sub. Or if you look in the comment section, same link to join the channel with that same tier three sub. Okay. But that's it for now, folks. We'll be back with another video in the next one. Enjoy this Neezer teams. Have a good one.